Hey guys, welcome to day four. It's me again. So now that you have your ideas and you have your inspiration and your mood boards and all that good stuff, what do you need to have prepared before you can start your comic? You're going to be working on your comic for months, if not years, probably years, if you are, say, working on multiple proje projects or you are working like a day job, it's going to take a while to get this comic done. So you're going to need a lot of foundational work done in order to save yourself lots of headaches later down the road and lots of inconsistencies in your designs and in your comic pages. So if you want to be as thorough as possible, here's what to work on before you start making actual comic pages. So number one, character sheets. Definitely one of my favorite things to prep uh, when I am designing stuff for my comic. You're going to want to have turnarounds of all your main characters, um, meaning you show, say, like their front, their side view, and from the back. That's usually all I need for character sheets, but some people would do like three-quarter view from the front and back if that really helps you um, be able to keep your characters on model. You're going to want to draw all of your characters in different outfits and costumes if they require any costume changes to ensure that they fit your character's design. You're going to want to include colors, you know, what colors make up their design, um, and if it's in a black and white or a grayscale comic, you're probably going to want to figure out, like, you know, what values you're going to put there, whether it's, like, pure black and white or if it's gray tones as well. I could go way in depth about how to design characters, but that is for another video. So moving on, number two, you're going to want to design your settings as well. You're going to want to do, you know, if you have scenes that take place indoors, you're going to want to have like a floor plan of the room or maybe the building they're in if they explore, say, the whole house or something. Um, if it's outdoors, you're going to want sketches of wherever they are. You're going to want maps if it's a really big area. And same thing as the character sheets. You're probably going to want to draw this setting from a couple different angles, maybe say like one from the top down showing like the floor plan and then maybe one that is more 3D so you can get a sense of what it'll look like when the character is standing in the setting. And again, you want to make sure that you have your colors down. Maybe you want to do some lighting studies to see what it'll look like in the actual pages. Um, and again, if it's in black and white, then you'll want to test it in black and white. I also tend to, in order to understand the scale of some things, I'll usually do this for like outdoor scenes. Um, it's really helpful to also have a sketch where you place a character into the setting just to see how they compare to the rest of things so that you're not drawing huge buildings that do not scale to the person, etc. Uh, so that's really helpful to have. And again, I will get more into designing settings later on in this challenge. Um, and number three of what you'll need, you've already kind of started this if you uh, followed my last video about doing style explorations, but you'll want to have kind of a style guide for your comic. Now, this may stop at just your style explorations, which with whatever you've chosen, whether it's like a color comic or an inked comic, whatever it is, you might already have that down. But if you have, say, multiple styles within one comic, for example, if you have flashbacks that need to look visually different than anything happening in the current time in your comic, you'll want to make sure you design that. Um, if you have, say, different worlds that the characters go into that require a different style, you now is the time to figure that out. One example that I had to design for Nine Point is that there are several scenes where characters are talking about stories or um, instruction to other characters, which is illustrated in kind of a storybook style that is very different than the main style of Nine Point. So that is something that I had to draft out before I began on pages. And again, you can explore the coloring or the inking. Um, now is also the time to figure out, say, your lettering and your speech bubbles, kind of what ideas you want for that. Um, and none of this has to be perfected, but it's really good to understand the direction you want to go with with things. And finally, number four, along the same lines with characters and settings, you're going to want to draw out important objects and elements within your story. Um, so for example, say you have like this special treasure that everyone in your story is looking for, you're going to want to design that from the get-go so that when you finally 
come across it in your story, you know exactly what it's going to look like. Um, and the same thing can go for, say, drawing motifs, like say your story includes like magical runes, you might want to design those early on, or maybe it's the logo of your character's coffee shop that they, you know, the whole story takes place in. For example, for Nine Point, I did a lot of design work for um, different weapons and um, important objects that characters use or interact with um, that I, I worked on those pretty early on and it's very helpful to kind of understand like the style of things. You know, that can also include like in Nine Point I designed like some of the sigils for the different knights um, and their different orders. Anything like that you can think of that will be important that might just kind of be in the background of a lot of your scenes. It's really important to draw it out. Um, and you know, I guess part of it falls into setting and character sheets, but sometimes they're just on their own and you gotta design them. So once you have all these things, I think this is like the bare minimum of stuff that you need before you start going into like storyboarding your, your, your comic, um, once you have your script and stuff. There's definitely like more stuff you can do that's a lot more detailed, um, and I know, <laughs> I'm sure this also feels pretty detailed already. Um, but these are just basic things that I find really helpful whenever I leave a project and come back to it later, um, just to remind me how everything looks. <laughs> and um, it also helps to have all of your character designs and all your settings and motifs, etc. all laid out. So you can all look at it at once and just be like, okay, this all feels cohesive. It all feels like it's from the same story, and that is definitely why I recommend doing this stuff up front before you start working on your comic pages, um, because, you know, you might get halfway through your comic and realize that you did not introduce this really important design motif. That can be rough and disheartening, so it's very important to get this stuff done up front. However, there's nothing stopping you from starting these alongside beginning to make comic pages or as you write your script or as you start storyboarding things. You can honestly go into a project with no planning at all. I've done it in the past. It's worked out fine. Um, I think a lot of my previous comics were a lot sloppier than Nine Point uh, because of this, where I was kind of doing my design work on the page. But if doing all this prep work really hinders you from starting your project, I think it's okay to skip it and just dive in and explore and have fun, because that's, that's the important part. But like I said, if I'm ever working on multiple projects, or if I have to ever stop working on a comic for like three months to work on something else, having character sheets and the settings, etc. all drawn out makes it really easy to pick up where I left off and just dive right back into the comic pages I was working on and man, it makes everything so much more consistent and keeps all my characters on model and make, helps me understand the setting that I'm drawing. So yes, these are all tools that will help you out a ton later down the line. So I think that is all I have for today. I hopefully will go into all of these things in a lot more like a lot more in depth later this month, um, but this is kind of a nice little checklist for you to, to look at if you're, you're not sure where to start on your prep work. Um, so tomorrow Bones will be back with another video about writing. Um, I don't, I don't know what it's gonna be. He has a list, but sometimes he changes his mind. I don't know. Anyways, he will be back tomorrow with a writing video and you should look forward to that. And thank you so much for watching. This has been really fun so far. I'm glad that we're answering a lot of questions for people. Yeah, just, you guys are great. And I wish you luck on all your comic stuff. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Um, goodbye. <laughs>